Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, one of the other considerations that uh, that we have with respect to taking advantage of being the options writer is implementing a, a little strategy known as the iron condor. And sometimes when we get looking, you know, when we start Googling uh, option strategies and, and looking for different, uh, you know, uh, ways of participating in the market, some of the names that are presented to us become a little bit confusing. But really, the iron condor is a very simple strategy that just simply combines the two strategies that we've already talked about. So the reason why we might look to implement an iron condor is that we may expect the pair value to be range bound for a certain period of time. All we're really looking to do is combine a call credit spread with a put credit spread. And the benefit is that we really can be only wrong on one side. And so with this in mind, Take a look at, let's say, the U.S. versus the uh, the yen again, the uh, the CDD, and let's say, for example, I felt that that the uh, that the CDD is going to be below 80 on uh, on the third Friday of of October. Well, I can sell off those 80 calls. You notice what I've done is I've actually gone a little bit further out of the money than my last example. So the further out of the money I go, the higher the probability of these options expiring worthless. Now what this what this does is it just gives me a little bit more flexibility when I'm creating this iron condor. So so because I'm going to collect two credits, I can be a little bit more generous with the uh, with the options that I write because I'm doubling the uh, the the income. So when we take a look at this, I'm going to sell the 80 strikes and I'm going to buy the 81 and a half. So I'm going to I'm going to create a 1.5 uh, spread uh, between this particular uh, call credit. At the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, I'm going to sell the 75 and a half strikes, and I'm going to buy the 74 puts. So really what has to happen between now and the third Friday of October is as long as the actual pair is trading between these particular levels, so within that, uh, that uh, yellow highlighted zone, then I will actually get to keep the entire the entire credit. But remember, I can only be wrong on one side. So in other words, if the pair value actually uh, moves higher and is trading between 80 and 81, well, we know for a fact that the put spread is going to expire. If the other uh, happens and the, um, the YUK drops in value and threatens our put credit spread, well, we know for a fact that the call credit spread is going to expire. So we can only be exposed to risk on one side of the uh, on one side of the trade. Now, um, so the question uh, here comes up, but it might touch uh, um, uh, two points. Well, we could conceivably, within the life cycle of the option uh, of this option strategy, see an increase higher, and then we could see completely an increase lower. But remember, as the particular pair of value is is fluctuating, we're getting the we're taking advantage of the passage of time. So in fact the best thing that can happen for us is we see the pair value go up a little bit, go down a little bit, go sideways a little bit, so on and so forth, because every day that we move towards expiration, these two particular credit spreads are actually losing value. Now, sure, one day, one position is going to be looking like it's losing money over the next position and so on and so forth. And this is why we have to have a, a bigger picture outlook on, uh, on you know, and, and really look for that expiration date to be sort of the point at which we're concerned about. Because we're going to see fluctuations in our position throughout the you know, life cycle of the, of the strategy. As long as we're trading below 80 in this case, or above 75 and a half in the case of the puts, we really don't have anything to worry about. So 
in this particular case, we're looking at four legs, which is the term that we give to uh, um, a strategy utilizing uh, a number of different uh, uh, a number of different uh, positions. And incidentally, Victoria just mentioned, um, you know, it's a safe strategy because it's European uh, exercise, so we can't get assigned. And that's absolutely right. It really doesn't matter where the option, uh, the the uh, underlying pair value is trading, because uh, because we're short those contracts. Nobody can, can and they're European style exercise. Nobody can force us to uh, to fulfill our obligations. Unlike in the equity world, where if we were actually um, in the money on any one of those credit spreads, uh, somebody could come along and say, "Well, you know what? I want you to deliver the shares right now." So in this case, this becomes an, uh, an interesting proposition because you you truly have until expiration to decide uh, ultimately. Uh, what what uh, what we're uh, what we're looking at now there are many different uh, um, reasons why one may want to get out of the position I had a question online you know would you get out um, you know five to ten days uh, prior to expiration uh, due to gamma which is of course one of the extenuating uh, variables in options pricing but uh, what I would suggest Ray is that it, it's going to cost us a fairly uh, healthy uh, commission to get into this trade. So rather than being oversensitive to some of these different variables, what I would look to do is if I can just let this thing expire worthless and not incur any commissions uh, to, uh, to close it out, then that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because uh, realistically, if all of these options expire, hey, it doesn't cost me anything to get out of the trade, and I know that I'm going to collect my maximum uh, profits, and that's what I was looking to do in, uh, in, the, uh, in the first place. Now, Johnny's question is, uh, for the strikes to sell, based more on support and resistance uh, or on delta, I'm looking at the, 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 uh, the underlying price chart, and I'm looking at support and resistance. I'm looking at probabilities of, of, uh, of those options being in the money. And when I look at resistance levels and I see areas where the pair is not likely to trade above, that tells me that it's, it's a reasonably safe place to write calls. I'll look at support levels where the pair is not likely to trade below, and it's a reasonably, uh, it's a reasonable, uh, reasonably safe area to, uh, to uh, uh, sell puts. Commissions are going to vary from broker to broker, guys, so I can't really comment on, on commissions. Uh, ultimately, what I would suggest you do, do is just take a look at um, at your you know, individual brokers and, and uh, take a look at what they charge for some of these different spreads because it will vary from broker to broker. And and the commission is, and and its um, and its influence on your profitability will be largely due to um, or have a lot to do with how much you're actually placing on the trade. So if you're only buying one spread or, you know, one if you're only applying one iron condor, well, the profit potential and the credit you that you're receiving is going to be offset significantly by the commissions whereas if you're doing 10, uh it's not going to have quite the influence. So there's a lot of different variables that are going to influence the in impact of commissions. So I just suggest you take a look at it on an individual basis. But what we're looking at here, guys, and I'll just give you a, more or less a generic example. We'll talk about the YUK, but without specific strikes, I'll, I'll, I'll do a one-point intro here. We're going to sell a call at 80. We're going to buy a call at 81, and that ultimately creates our bear call spread. We're then going to look to sell a put at 75, and we're going to uh, um, buy a put at 74, and that creates our bull put spread. Together... That equals an iron condor. So, you know, where previously one might be a little overwhelmed by some of the different names given to these what would be seemingly advanced strategies, what we've done here tonight is we've taken, taken two separate strategies, the credit, a call credit spread and a put credit spread. We combine them together, and we've made the iron condor. And that's all an iron condor is. So when we take a look at this particular uh, example, guys, what you'll notice is that my my um, call credit spread is is going to collect 36 cents, but I've got to give out 23 cents of that. My put credit spread, I'm going to collect 50 cents, but I've got to give out 31 cents of that. So the net credit is going to be 32 cents, and you can see 
that as long as the pair is trading above 75.15 and below 80.32, so we, we're talking about a five-point range on this particular pair, we will collect our full um, our full profits. Our maximum risk exposure is the um, 118 dollars. Our maximum profit potential is about 32 dollars. So you can see that we're looking upwards of about a 28 percent return on our capital. And really, what has to happen is the pair just needs to be range bound within that level for the next month. So, guys couple of things to consider here when looking to implement these strategies. Number one, um, near-term expiration results in a faster option dep depreciation. The closer the strike prices are together, the less margin requirement. The closer the written strike uh, pair price is uh, the, uh, to, the, to, the, um, to, of course, the current value of the underlying the greater chance of the option expiring in the money. So what that means is that if we want to put the laws of probability in our favor more effectively, what we can do is we can give up a little bit of the profit, which is sometimes hard for us to do. I know that. But we have to understand that in the options world, profit and probability are one and the same. So if we, if we actually put the laws of probability in our favor by choosing an option contract is going, that, is, that has a higher probability of expiring worthless, then we can collect that consistent income on a month-over-month -month basis and, uh, and um, not have to worry ultimately about, uh, about uh, you know, having to fulfill a, or having to, um, to risk a full uh, um, you know, loss on any one position. So again, the further out of the money we create these strategies, the higher the probability we, we are of actually collecting the full premium. So with that in mind, guys, I'll just uh, uh, I'll encourage everybody to, uh, to take a look at the fxoptions.com site. In fact, uh, what I might just look to do here, because we do have a couple of minutes, is um, I'm going to see if I can share uh, one of my uh, sc screens here. And, uh, and ultimately, I'll show you the site, and maybe we can take a look at it uh, live. So just, uh, just bear with me one second. You can see I've got a bunch of charts going here. So just uh, bear with me one second while we, um, while we take a look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, show you the, um, this particular site here. And we talk about the, uh, the, the idea of, of looking at options that are perhaps – um, in, a, in, a, in an environment where uh, they are perhaps considered to be um, over, um, overvalued or overpriced, if you will. And so just as a quick example, I'll utilize the CDD right now, and I can click on this particular, um, particular uh, 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 symbol, and we can take a look at uh, some of the different uh, variables that, um, that, are, that apply to the CDD right now. And if we talk about looking at selling options, you can see that, that what we're looking at here is an implied volatility of 10.85 presently. Well, you can see that the 52-week low on the CDD was 7.38, and the 52-week high was 13.31. So we've actually seen a fairly uh, uh, significant increase in implied volatility, about a 3% expansion in, in implied volatility. Now, what that means is that these options are actually trading um, at a little bit more of an expensive premium than, they were, than they, what they were sorry, in, the, um, in the past. And so we can take a look and we can decide whether or not it's, uh, it's, an, appropriate, uh, it's an appropriate opportunity to trade. So you can also see, guys, as well, that we have a nice little chart that we can take a look at. We can, uh, we can also take a look at some of the different uh, option contracts and, and prices uh, available for, for this particular um, pair value. So there's some fantastic little tools in here that you can actually take advantage of uh, while you're learning this, uh, this, particular, um, this particular market. Now, the other thing that I was, was going to just draw your attention to, guys, as well, since, again, we had a couple of minutes, is to take a look at, at the uh, weekly outlook as well, which can be found at the FX Options site under News and Commentary. And it's a nice little short video where we're, uh, we're just looking at price charts. We're taking a look at the U.S. dollar and how it's trading against a basket of security. 
securities, uh, and then we're referencing the, the various pairs and how we might consider taking advantage of, uh, of those. So uh, on that note, guys, I'll just uh, return back to, um, to, the, uh, to the presentation here, and, uh, and uh, ultimately we'll field any questions that folks might have. But I highly encourage you, if you're not already taking advantage of, uh, of, the, um, of, of this particular um, you know, these particular uh, option contracts to certainly look a little bit more uh, closely uh, into that and, um, and take advantage of, uh, of, the, um, of the opportunities that are available at this point. Um, so with that in mind, guys, I uh, just want to, uh, again, uh, see if anybody has any questions. I'm not sure uh, whether or not, uh, Katrina, you want to take back uh, the presentation, and I can just uh, remain online here and, and answer questions. I'll, I'll more or less leave it uh, up, to, uh, up to you to decide. But uh, for the most part, uh, guys, that is essentially uh, it for me. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll encourage any questions, but if there aren't any, then uh, we'll wrap it up here for this evening. All right. doesn't look like we have any additional questions at this point in time. So our thanks again to Jason for sharing the presentation today. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, if you are still in the desktop application, feel free to just go. I think in the bottom corner you should have an icon so you can return back to the presentation itself. If you'd like to learn more about the IIC FX options that we discussed today, make sure to visit www.fxoptions.com. Jason did a pretty good demo, but you'll be able to play around and see the full list of available currency pairs and check out all of the other educational resources that we also have available. We do have a lot of upcoming webinars, so make sure to check back for our schedule. You can check it out on the FX Options website or at www.iac.com slash webinars. Make sure to sign up. Thanks again to everyone, and we will see you back next week. Thanks, Jason. Hey, thanks very much. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.